Hello and welcome to the DOS show. I'm your host Michael and in this episode I would like to talk about making good decisions versus not so good decisions when it comes to capacitor removal. While browsing on YouTube I came along many different videos that describe how a particular individual likes to remove and reinstall electrolytic capacitors. While I believe there's no right or wrong in doing this, I also strongly believe that there's a variety of more or less sensible ways of doing things as um, removing capacitors. Anyhow, in this segment I will try to focus on the capacitor removal and installation itself and in an upcoming episode I would like to introduce um, to you the tools I use and why I use them. These tools make sense to me um, at the time I bought them. I researched these tools and looked for a lightly used version of that particular tool. In many cases I had to fix that tool in order to make it work for me. I find this to be a fun process as I learn about how this particular tool works and how to fix it on the fly if I have to. But I'm getting ahead of myself now. First things first as they say. And first, um, well, I'm going to turn on my film extractor so it's going to be a bit noisier. So let's check how this works. <laughs> And first I like to visually inspect the board that I'll be working on. I'll be looking for bulge capacitors, for fuzzy dust around the area, um, seeing corroded chips and discolored traces is a good indication that there are some electrolytes eating away on your price position. I am using an old uh, SE30 logic board here, which has helped me many times to troubleshoot a bad logic board I was trying to revive. But today I want to focus on this one microfarad capacitor. When these logic boards were new, all of the electrolytic capacitors had values ranging from one microfarad to 470 microfarad. Um, all had a 16 volt cap. Well, I always make sure that the microfarad value stays the same. I like to raise the maximum safe voltage by about 20%. So these capacitors on this particular board would be replaced with 25 volt safe limit capacitors. I like to use my Hakko 850B sawdust um, um, hot air station. There are probably better models, but this one was cheap and it works for me. I use plenty of flux when I remove capacitors. Flux helps to carry corrosion away from the component I'm working on. It distributes heat evenly and holds the temperature in the area I'm working on. It's going to cause quite a bit of smoke in a second. Reaving these fumes in probably is not a good thing, and so I use a fume extractor. Um, that's the noise you hear. This particular model is also a HACO. Um, I bought it used. Um, generally, I like equipment which is constructed and metal, as they usually tend to be longer lasting. Once I see the solder, go shiny. 
I carefully remove the capacitor with my ESD safe tweezers. I wiggle it around a little bit and see that it comes loose. Um, these tweezers have a coating on them which keeps them from discharging electrostatic energy to the board I'm working on. They are cheap and effective. Oops, slipped up there. There you go. You see how shiny that solder is? Alright, cool. So we got that thing off. Once the capacitor is removed, I put on more flux. And I clean off the area with my solder gray. I use some flux to kind of supercharge this um, this gray, and then I use my Heiko solder station to suck up this flux, uh, this solder. Alright. Gonna use a Q-tip the solder and debris and uh, corrosion and whatever came up and then inspect the um, pad and make sure it doesn't have any um, that the traces are still connected to it the way they should then get some more 99% alcohol Clean it some more until I'm satisfied with the look, look I'm getting. What I do then is I like to take a um, fiberglass pencil and I move over the the pad to remove corrosion. Um, sometimes you know I like to do it this way versus using more heat and uh, solder and uh, do this over and over and actually delaminate the pad from the substrate so this way it's a little bit easier on the, um, on the pad um, you see I, I can't I can't really focus on it too well um, through my phone but um, I kind of removed the mask here too I can touch it up later on with some um, conformal coating. So, okay, once I got this taken off, I clean off that pad again, and then get my, my solder, uh, which I have right here. Okay. I like to use Kester, uh, some good stuff. Some more flux on this thing, and um, recode the pad with some um, some solder. I clean that off again and see what I've done. Do I like it? Yeah, looks pretty good. Um, also. When you reinstall the capacitor, you will have a flat surface, which helps you tremendously in installing uh, your new capacitor. Because as soon as you, e even if you manage to um, 
to align this thing properly, as soon as you hit it with your southern iron, it will actually slip around and move on you. So um, I kind of avoid that by having the pad level as, as good as I can. And um, here's another trick I do. I use um, I use two. Um, well, first off, I do put some some flux on the uh, leads of that capacitor, like so. Just a little bit to wet it a little. Bit. Then I take my solder and my um, my iron. I put a thin coat on my soldering tip and wipe over the capacitor. I have plenty of um, a flux on here, so it will coat it evenly, as you will see. See, just a slight little coat to shine it up some. So then comes the installation, and here's another trick I do. I use um, two. Um, tweezers, which is kind of difficult right now because I'm doing this um, kind of through my cell phone, which is not that easy. So one tweezer, one pair of tweezers I used to align the uh, capacitor. I'm sorry, I had too much coffee this morning. I guess I'm a bit shaky. So anyway, I aligned the pads with the leads of my capacitor and once I'm happy with the way I have it I'm holding on the uh, capacitor with my second pair of tweezers as you see right now once my HACO came up to temperature which goes really fast I just touch slightly on the, um, on the pad and um, just tack it on a little bit then I come down and put a little bit more flux on here, like so. Maybe even a little bit more. You can all, you, you can have a, never have too much flux that you're using. Uh, you can always clean this stuff off. So um, I wet my my solder line. I come back. Uh, put my pair of tweezers on top of the um, capacitor and hold it down still because if it's not soldered on one lead is not soldered on properly it will move again so I do this touch it quickly and there you go there you have it nicely soldered down it looks like I've done a good job here I now clean the remaining flux with alcohol um, like so and once I have finished the board we'll clean the board with my Skytron sweeping frequency ultrasonic cleaner um, that ultrasonic cleaner I use with 18.2 mix ultra clean um, lab uh, grade water um, 18.2 mix is in theory the cleanest water you can get it is slightly negatively charged and will uh, aid in the cleaning and uh, removal of dirt and debris actually um, I could drop a turned on cell phone in this tank of my um, ultrasonic cleaner and it would keep working as um, this type of water will not conduct electricity. Now if I reach in there with my fingers without gloves or leave the cell phone in there for a few days then the water will conduct electricity again as the liquid pools um, electrolytes of my fingers or the component itself. Actually um, what I never do is I never use a dishwasher, especially not with soap in it. Um, 
dish detergent contains silicates and um, they will actually um, damage the traces more and um, once it's dried uh, moisture from the air will interact with the silicates that are remaining on the board and will cause um, it to fail. So um, once I cleaned um, that board I rinsed the logic board off with my filtered water and then follow that by dropping the logic board in uh, a bath of 99% alcohol for about 15 minutes. This will remove the moisture, or remaining moisture, um, of the board. The final step is to put the logic board in my little heater oven where I heat the board for about, to about 130 degrees. Um, just enough to let the alcohol and 1% remaining water from the alcohol, since it's 99%, evaporate. And this is how I replace capacitors. I do this this way because it is sensible to me. Um, you can change this method or you can use it the way I do if it suits you. Or you don't do any of these things I do here and just apply your own method. But I believe sharing sensible content. Um, so I think YouTube is a great learning tool and I learn a lot of uh, stuff on YouTube. But again, I like to learn things that make sense to me. I, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it will um, maybe it was useful to you and I will see you again for my next episode of the Dust Show. And um, please don't subscribe or like this video unless you absolutely have to. But please leave a comment of how you like to remove um, old capacitors. Maybe I can learn something from you in return. Anyway, good night and good luck. I'm Michael and you were watching the DOS show.